Mm -hmm. Why don't we talk about the pools here? Because we're still waiting yes. for some of the players to do some vetoes. You know, the tournament just now started here in Columbus. Mm -hmm. So, as soon as we bring up the pools, we will be able to chat about those. But, man, so just to talk about Rhett's ZVZ for a split second, we got to see him play in Sao Paulo, and he was absolutely massive. And here we go. So this is Group C. We are going to be casting, first off, Violet versus Rhett to kick it off with a very volatile ZVZ. Oh, man. Yeah, and then, and then of course, the other notable match. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the other two players, uh, of course, in the group are going to be Huck and Zaka. And those are two uh, just incredible, incredible Protoss players. Huck, of course, probably the more famous one. Zaka, the European badass that he is. Mm -hmm. You can never really count him out, but Huck's definitely the, the big favorite in Group C. Yeah, Huck is actually very much expected to do incredibly well this tournament. We actually haven't seen too much out of him after his huge finish at Orlando right. last year, and so he's really got a lot to prove coming into this. Now, Red, on the other hand, in his group, is coming off of a recent win at the Red Bull LAN that right. happened last week. Uh, we saw him working on his training. Now, in that tournament, he only had to play PVZ, or yes, yeah, ZVP, to make right. it all the way through the finals. His challenge was ZVP. And then all of the matches in the bracket were ZVP as well. And actually, here's a bunch of information on him. Yeah, you can see, of course, uh, Rhett's ZVZ is his best statistical uh, uh, matchup. And he's very, very good at it. He's very uh, stable in that matchup. A lot of people say that it is so volatile, like we were mentioning earlier. Mm -hmm. But Rhett just seems to kind of have that insider information to make it work for him right. almost every single time. Of course, he just has a huge, huge slew of accomplishments, mm -hmm. of course, winning. Uh, I think the biggest one, the one that everyone knows him for, was that European Battle.net Invitational last year. Oh, yeah. He absolutely tore that up. Also, the entire house was going crazy when he was up there because it was in Warsaw, Poland. So he had, he had a ton of fans there as well. And now... Rhett is a player that, regardless of, of ZVZ being such a volatile matchup, he's able to control it, right? He's one of those players that you always talk about being one of the best players at having a thin defense. He always barely builds just enough units to hold off the opponent. And in a ZVZ, that's so crucial because yeah. anytime you can fit in drones, you're going to be pulling ahead. Yeah, absolutely. It's one of the hardest things as a Zerg player uh, just to know exactly when. And it, it really all comes down to scouting, and that's mm -hmm. one of the things that Red is just so, so good at in uh, almost all of his matchups. In ZVZ, it comes down to scouting a lot because you just have to know exactly what's going on, what, what your opponent is doing tech-wise, and also if anything's coming uh, to your base. But as we look at Violet, this is a player who has just been a complete, complete rising star mm -hmm. in the StarCraft II scene. Uh, almost this past, like, three, six, three or six months, you know, he was so famous for winning so many online competitions. And then he started going to these LAN events and he even won a huge LAN event uh, at the IEM Season 6 in Sao Paulo, which you were actually, I think you casted, correct? That is absolutely correct. And watching him play there was phenomenal because nobody was terribly familiar with his style just yet, but he came through the bracket and ended up just getting upsets left and right and ended up just taking the entire thing surprisingly, although he, he was just in such good form. And after having just coming off winning the, uh, the MLG Winter Qualifier as well for Europe, I mean, he was, he was playing from the U.S. to play in Europe. So yeah, he can make anything happen. He's definitely a crazy, crazy competitor. And it looks like, as we are now in the lobby, our uh, first map is going to be uh, dual site. What oh. do you think about dual site here? Is I'm going to make sure the two players are ready. I mean, I know that for ZVZ, typically, there's not that much to talk about as far as the maps making a huge difference. But in this case, the expansions is one thing to always talk about in dual site. Because your third is always reaching into where your opponent is, it can get volatile very quickly, especially because ZBC is going to be such a fast matchup in general. Yeah. Securing that third and holding it is always going to be a challenge. Absolutely. All right, Rob. Well, the game has started counting down now for MLG dual site here. Both players saying good luck, have fun. And I'm super excited to see who's going to take this. You know, the first match of any tournament is probably one of the most important. All these matches obviously important, but this will kind of set the trend for the entire tournament for each of these two players. Oh, absolutely, it's right. This is where the game. pace is set every single time because if you get out here and you get into a bad mental state, you're going to have trouble coming out of that. You need to start feeling good. All right, so over here on the right-hand side of the map from Team Liquid as the Red Zerg it is none other than Rhett. And over here, his opponent spawning in as the Blue Zerg repping Team Empire, Violet. And, you know, it's so funny that Empire, th there's these teams in Europe, uh, the Millenniums and the Empires of the world, that sure they don't have that many sponsors, sure they aren't the biggest organizations, but they have such good players. Empire, of course, having Violet and Koss. They have a huge 
huge, huge array of players. But those, of course, are the two superstars. Then, of course, I don't have to mention Millennium with Stefano. Sure. It's just it's really, really awesome to see some of these smaller teams with just such talented players. Well, there's just, that that's thats the word right there, right? Talent. There is just so much talent in StarCraft II right now. We consistently see new players show up and really make a name for themselves so quickly because right now there's, there's a lot of tournaments. There's a lot of tournaments with a lot of eyes on them, and so a good player can get recognized very quickly. All right, so you see a drone here coming out for Violet, a pretty early scout. I'm wondering if he... Uh, it, I guess he thinks Red's going to do something a little bit cheesy, but Red really not known for doing anything like no. that. DBZ is a matchup, though, that as of late does have some cheesiness to it in the opening of the game. Of course, ten pool uh, and pulling the drones being very, very common. There goes the pool yeah. going down. So Red's going to open up pretty standard. And as the drone comes in, he's going to see exactly uh, not the, all that much. I mean, this right. is basically almost a bad scout at this point. Yeah, so he's actually going to be going that 14 gas into 14 pool. So that means that he is going to have his speed out a, a good amount sooner than Violet. It's actually looking like maybe 40-ish game seconds or so, possibly a little bit less than that. He's actually already all the way up to 60 gas just about. And the thing about StarCraft II is that when you get Ling speed, if your opponent has anything on the map, you are going to surround it and kill it, 100%. Yeah. So it is that, that extra few seconds can just make the biggest difference in the world. Yeah, and because of that, you know, I, I think Violet with this scout is going to know that, and he probably won't move out uh, until he gets that speed upgrade. And, of course, we do see Rhett just now starting that. Queen's coming out for both players. Rhett uh, opening up with four lings. Violet only getting two himself. It makes me wonder if he will indeed throw down uh, well, oh. there it is, actually, the yeah. Roach Warren off of one base coming down for Violet. Okay, so pretty interesting to see Violet going for Roaches. I actually have not seen this in ZBZ in a very long time. Traditionally, you always just see both players evolve into the Ling Baneling until they can feel comfortable enough to either kill their opponent or secure that natural. And it looks like Rhett is uh, trying to actually take his natural here. There is a drone from Violet. Uh, denying it for just a little bit, but the Lings are going to chase it out, and the expansion is going down. And what this means is we're going to start seeing some very offensive stuff come out of Violet. With this Roach Warren, he could be very, very aggressive uh, with those Roach units. And is Rhett going to be able to see the fact the Roach oh. Warren is down? Yes, yes, he will. So you might just see him throw down uh, some spine crawlers in his main base or just actually make a bunch of links because with speed you can get an easy surround and split some of the forces off in the middle of the map. Now one of the scariest things about this is that this, this is basically the seven roach rush. So this is so many units out on the field very early and Rhett went down for throwing a hatchery first right. out here, right before, or well, a hatchery soon enough in the game that he's going to be really vulnerable to this. And now Rhett, surprisingly, is actually also going for a baneling nest. If Violet spreads out all of his roaches, he can effectively neutralize that baneling nest. And Violet being very smart, expanding behind it instead of adding on that seventh roach. And here we go. This is what I was talking about. The Lings were somewhat thinking of moving out, but the Overlords from Rhett did, of course, show him that those roaches are coming. But what is oh. Violet doing is he's uh, kind of running a circle here. And that was basically just a huge decoy well. or a, a fake play almost. And that will not be scouted. Oh. So the roaches are returning to Blaze. This is what I was talking about, guys. Violet is just such such a unique player that he just has some crazy, crazy builds like this. Well, and this actually, as as you can see, it's now forced Rhett. I, I believe that forced his Roach Warren. I don't think that he was planning on that initially. Right. And that also forced him to build 10 links. Right. And, uh, of course, I mean, if you follow Red, if you've seen him playing some of these other tournaments, he likes to make those drones, guys. And, and this is something that Violet was definitely clued huh. in on. Because now Rhett's just going to have all these links. And he's not going to be able to do all that much because all he has to do with the road is form a little wall here like he does have. Make sure that the surf surface area isn't too much. And he'll be able to survive very, very easily against all these links. The one thing oh, that he but wants he to be careful of is not getting surrounded, Rob. Oh, man, and that's an absolutely huge surround onto Violet. You can just see all of the roaches losing so much HP, but there just might not be enough of them. Fortunately enough, Violet had a few links of his own, and it was able to just pick away at the rest of those links and clean it up. Now, Red only got in there, and I think he killed maybe two roaches. Yeah, yeah, he did not lose really any at all. That was so impressed right now for Violet doing that, that kind of seven yeah. roach rush fake. That's just a build, like you said, that we have not seen in a very, very long time, unless you're playing in, like, the bronze or silver leagues. Yeah. And uh, here is Violet actually using kind of uh, a new up, uh, I guess, of that strategy, a, a re-up, if you will, here in the tip-top huh. levels of StarCraft.
Well, and it's just, you know, it, it was, I, I believe the seven row stress was the one that was found out by the, like, algorithm or whatever, right? So it's, right. A, it's actually, like, mathematically supposed to be ridiculously good anyway. Right. So Violet mixing it up, only building six roaches, also taking that expansion. And surprisingly, like, Rhett generally isn't a player that you can juke very hard because he's right. just so good about getting lots of information all the time. And really, he, his information feelers, right, his overlords were actually what, what tricked him into making all of that extra defense. And now, so Violet still doesn't have Ling Speed finished up. Yeah, he actually has uh, not started at all. No. He's got a lot of roaches Ooh. and plus one about to finish. This is very Sin-esque, of course, the Taiwanese Zerg player does a lot of these timing pushes with the plus one upgrade. That's actually what we're about to see here from Violet as he is pushed out all the way across the middle of the map next to the unit slash name slash Zelnaga Tower 2 Rob here. And I don't know if Brett's going to be able to def Well, never mind. Oh, he's got a lot of yeah. roaches of himself. He's also doing a huge counter attack over here at the natural of Violet, but there are a handful of roaches. But here we go, Rob. Oh, wow. And it's Maybe actually not. looking like Violet is going to be forced to retreat. He did not expect Rhett to have that many units out there. And there's a small amount of a melee. But over here, the damage is really setting in as Rhett absolutely tears into all of the drones out at that natural and continues to chase off all of Violet's attack. Yeah, this is looking kind of scary right now for Violet because those roaches of Rhett are still continuing across the map. And he's got a bunch of links about to pop here. 12 more on the way. And you can see on the mini-map, so many more just streaming across the map. I don't know. Oh, he's actually cutting off these roaches. That is so smart coming out for Rhett. Oh, yes. Now, this is just so nice. Rhett is doing what he needs to do. He has Ling speed, and he has roaches out on the map. You need to use the Ling to surround those roaches so that you can bring your own roaches and demolish it because nobody has speed yet. It's really just going to be getting those, all about getting those surrounds. And now Rhett is pushing in here, but will it be enough to break through Violet? He actually has a lot of stuff here. I believe he has almost enough energy for at least one transfuse, but Rhett may be, over to, may, may be able to overpower. Yeah, here come a bunch of links now, and there goes one of the transfusions. The other queen is going to live, oh. and Violet pulling back, but that is just so oh. many units here. Both of the queens. Yeah, a lot of drones have been taken out as well. Red actually droning behind this, already at 29 to 27. Ten drones about to come out. Violet should hold this, but now without some casualties of war. 43 oh, yeah. to 60 supply. I mean, really, he just lost so many drones during that last fight. 39 to 26 drones, and now he's forced to pull drones to try to defend. But at this point, even if he kills all of those roaches, he is just going to have to pull a miracle to come even close to taking this game. Yeah, we see Red going up onto the lair attack. More roaches now popping out for Vice to clean up the remaining roaches of Red. And Overlord still stays up in the sky, and it doesn't have to be too afraid of any queens because, well, they both died in that last attack. Now, here is the huge huge gas uh, coming out for Rhett. That basically signals to me that we're going to be seeing Mutas come out, and because economically Violet is so far behind, I think if he ever really gets to that tech, I don't know how he's going to be able to defend against it. Sure, he could put down Spore Crawlers, but that's going to be at the cost of some drones. Right, and every Spore that he puts down is just going to put him further behind anyway. Like, right now, Violet can literally only build drones and queens to try to get back in this game. Right. And, I mean... Rhett's going to be building Mutalisks very soon. He's also taking his third out here as well. So Rhett is just doing what he needs to do to stay ahead. He's also continuing the unit production as well. He just about has his plus one finished also and continues to drone massively because he can, maintaining a massive supply lead. Yeah, we see him actually starting the uh, Glil Reconstitution. And over here at the Natural, some more lanes running by. And if he can get that queen, that is going to be so oh, annoying. But by the way, it does fall. That'll be all that falls, but losing a queen like that just means that his macro is going to be so, so far, uh, or excuse me, so less superior to Red's because he just will not have that larva. And we That's still do right. not see uh, the spire start. It looks like he just wants to utilize a huge, huge roach attack. If you look at the supplies, 86 to 66, and we got 10 yeah. roaches now coming up. This plus one is about to finish for Red. And so it seems like Violet is going into a bit of a panic mode at this point, right? He knows that because Red is staying active with all of his units, because Red continues to push through repeatedly, he's probably just going to have to go for an all-in if he has any chance at coming back from this. And now Red was getting getting a little handsy up there, pushing through, and now it's actually looking like Violet's speed is just about to finish, and Red is going to have at least a few seconds where he can get abused. Yeah, there is the speed finishing, and it looks like he might get one or two roaches oh. here, but then... In about uh, four or five seconds, the road speed of Red is going to finish, and that is a lot of roaches. 107 to 84 supply. Violet is pushing forward here, though. 
And now it's looking like Red is going to be able to just get a very nice surround. He has the extra queen in there as well. It doesn't have enough for a transfuse, although having the extra meat on the field made a large difference. And now Violet is forced into a retreat, and then he's passed out. Yeah, and good game. That was a smart play from Violet, but I kind of feel like he just overthought it in a sense. You know, a I mean, little bit. he started off and he couldn't do all that much work because of it. Uh, with that seven roach rush, he, he did kind of do the the loop de loop in the center of the map and fell back. Roach, or excuse me, Red did not see those roaches. Right. But he was ready for it with a huge counterattack. Yeah, now I actually think that we're going to move into a pretty big point in that match. I think that we're going to take a look at when Rhett did both the defense and the run by, I believe. I guess we'll see as soon as we hop into it. Now, Rhett once again just did a fantastic job staying on top of everything. I actually think that Violet's push, if he had just moved through with yeah. all of the roaches, just would have been effective. Sure. Right? Because Rhett only built 10 additional Zerglings, and there were already six roaches on the field. And I, I don't know. I actually, I think that he, I think he could have made it through. Oh, so. yes. And now, so uh, we're actually going to go to a brief break before we get into game number two. I'm Rob Simpson. I'm JP McDaniel. When we come back, we'll be going to MLG Daybreak for game two between Violet and Rhett. <laughs> 